Welcome back, everyone. The presidential race in 2019 may not be a two-horse race, as usual. Some Nigerians with quality are coming up with ideas on how to handle some of the issues confronting the nation. One of such persons wanting to be Nigeria's president is a former governor of Cross River State, Mr. Donald Dick. He is the SDP presidential candidate. He's been speaking with us on the program. Let's continue with the conversation now. You were talking about the economy, and Nigerians will want to know what you will do better. Uh, a financial expert once told me that whoever becomes Nigeria's next president uh, we may not be able to fix the economy easily because of what we have seen in the last six, seven years, which is uh, somewhat the foundation to what we're experiencing right now. You have a magic wand in fixing the economy. No, it's not a magic wand. It's a common sense wand, right? If you do the same thing over and over again, as we've been doing, you wouldn't get it right. I can take it from bits. Take the budgeting, for instance. You submit the budget uh, tail end of the year, and you want it passed early enough, it's not going to work. Over the last three years, our budgets have exceeded mid-term, mid-year, okay? And you start a budget at the, in the rainy season. And you've got to also stop budgeting monies for projects. You need to budget for the projects themselves. So it's not enough to say I've put $100 million for a road when the road is going to cost $10 billion, right? And every year you put $100 million, you'll never finish the road. You, probably, you budget for the road. But going beyond that, there's a lot of wastages in government. Folks don't pay tax in Nigeria. It's really an option. Forget all these VA, VA ideas and all those things. You need to bring a system of compulsion. I can give you an example. If you put a set of date by which if your taxes are not paid and a clearance is not received, you cannot operate your accounts. And I'm talking for, I'm, and this is for corporate um, houses. You cannot operate the accounts any, any further. You will compel people to pay taxes. That's how it works. Now it's still optional, right? Then going beyond that. So, I mean, you, you raised these issues, no, but you've I, not told Nigerians I, I, how you're going to concrete ways and approach uh, which you're going to handle them. I don't For example, want, I, you, I, I you're talking want, about the budget. I don't want to feed the opposition that has But no, no, Nigerians need to know. They're going to vote for I've you. Told, they need to I've know. I've told Nigerians that if you, if you cut wastage, right, if you improve your tax collection system, if you... Sit down with the banks and cut. You see, we deregulated interest rates. You don't, when supply and demand don't match, you don't deregulate. You only deregulate in a perfect economy. So there must be elements of regulation for interest rates. You cannot grow an economy on 25% interest rate. Developed countries are giving zero interest because they want the economy to keep on moving. We're charging 25%. It wouldn't work. Whether we're, and maybe you're going to talk. So you move, uh, you, you take decisive You've measures decisive. On, on the interest You've rates. You've got to be decisive. Absolutely decided. That's what I talked about in the beginning. You must have the will. You cannot charge 25%. It's, it's criminal. But, well, I mean, and you're charging it on other people's money. Yeah, you, 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 you've been a governor before, so you know how procurement process. You talked about a budget. How procurement process go? The lifespan of a budget or a project is not when it's placed in the budget. There, there must be the assessment of the, of, the, uh, of, of the project itself, the costing of the project. Mm -hmm. And even if after monies are released, it takes a long time for, it to, uh, for it money to be released. What Why would you do to bureaucracy? It's, look, first of all, I started off by telling you that you don't submit a budget in November and expect the National Assembly to pass it in December. Ordinarily, if you're planning properly by June, the National Assembly should have the budget. And then budget should. So you submit your budget in June. You should. Yes, we ought to submit budget in June. In Cross River, we used to do 30th of September. By the 30th of September, we've passed the budget. We've, we've submitted the budget. By the 31st of December, it's passed. First of January, we're implementing. When you were in, go when when you were in government. government. In for the national budget, I would even suggest that we start. We 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 pass the we submit the budget in June. But the floor is this. It's usually the executive budget. It's wrong. It should be the national budget. You should get inputs from members of the National Assembly. First. They represent people. They're closer to the people. You should even get inputs from states. Would you fight? You, would you fight a constitu constituency project? Do you believe in it? A constituency project to the extent that it is relevant for the overall growth of a nation, right, is not there to pep up the representative of the senator. 
if, for instance, there's a road that is of national import going through your constituency, and the rep wants that road done, you may term it constituency project, but it's an important road, so I'll do it. I want all arms of government, the judiciary, the, national, the legislative, even the state, give me your input. I would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would go through it and admit it to the extent in which we can, and it becomes a national budget. If part you of the become problem, president, part of the, Mr. Part of, just part a moment, because we're out of time. So I, I quickly want to ask you, if you become president, would you be the Minister of Petroleum Resources? No, I will not. I think that is hogwash, absolute hogwash. I'd rather be How? Minister of Finance. Really? I'd rather take over the finances of the country and know where the buck, where, where the buck, where the money is, how the money is spent. If you have to tackle power, for example, electricity, how long will it take you if you assume office today? Maximum 36 months, and I'll explain it to you. You see, this is a nation that flares, up to recently, 2.5 billion cubic feet of gas. That's equivalent to about 25 million liters of diesel. You flare it, you're burning it. Pipe that gas. Have a nationwide gas grid where in Literally in every senatorial district, there's gas, right? You're flaring that gas. That's your subsidy to industry. Get manufacturing off the national grid. Put them on gas. If I would, I would charge the gas relatively low, really, really low, because you were flaring it, okay? That's a subsidy. That would encourage, with low interest, that would encourage investment. Live domestic and small scale on the national grid. You can do it. In right. 24 months, you can have a national gas grid. In 24 months, you can have gas throughout this country if you're a serious nation. Let's anchor uh, at this point. Um, uh, we're going to a very critical moment. Do you have the funds to prosecute this campaign? It's not my campaign. It's our campaign. We're going to raise the funds. We have the funds, yes. How do you want to do but that? But I'm not talking about the kind of funds these folks uh, are going to spend, right? Because they're, they're looking for funds to give voters on the queue. I'm not going to do that. How do you hope to raise funds? Crowdfunding, the people of who, who, who want to see a change in this country. People are tired. We can't go on like this. So listen, let me say something. At Independence, we were 45 million. Today, we're 200 million. In 30 years, we'll be 400 million. If at 200 million, we have corruption, we're killing ourselves, kidnap, at 400 million, what will we be doing? You dare not come out of your house. All right. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I, I wish we, we were able to continue. But um, uh, the last question I will ask you, uh, if you become president, should you win this election, what would be uh, perhaps the, the, the most prioritized agenda, uh, plan on your agenda? Productivity. The Nigerian productivity index is dismal. Absolutely dismal, and it's re it's it's the it's responsible for literally everything we're going through. Every day, I'm sure you get texts from people asking you for one help or the other. It's a national thing now. Even your take-home pay doesn't take you home. We need to create jobs. We need to create a, an environment where people can literally go, go up and do things for how themselves. How many jobs can you create in one year? <laughs> I don't want to put a figure to it, but it has to run into the millions. It's an emergency. All right. We we'll have to get you back. You realize that. We have we to have, get you back at some point. You realize we that we have 20 million housing shortage in Nigeria. 20 million. If you, uh, if you put together a million houses a year, which can be done, and I, you know, if we had time, I would explain it to you, because the Navy in Cross River State has done something which is remarkable, building their barracks using laterite, and it's first class. You can build a million houses a year. If you were able to do that, 50 million people will be employed. Interesting. Mr. Donald Duke, it's a pleasure talking to you. My Mr. Pleasure. Social Democratic Party's presidential candidate running this race, perhaps not the first time, but I wish you luck in the coming days. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank, Thank you so much.